A strike returns to our TVs tomorrow night. The BBC One drama based on J.K. Rowling's best-selling crime novels, which she writes under the pseudonym Robert Galbraith. And I'm just delighted to say that, well, at least one of its at least one of its stars is here today to talk about it. Here's a clip from the news story Troubled Blood. Looks like Talbot based an entire theory around the Zodiac. Yeah. I can't stand all that stuff. What sign are you? No idea. Oh, come on. Everyone knows the star sign. Don't pretend you're above it. Sagittarius, Scorpio rising, sun in the first house. No, I only know that because my mum was crazy about that shit. Mm -hmm. What the hell does sun in the first house mean? It doesn't mean anything. Look at this now. The killer is Capricorn. Capricorn kills Julie W. It definitely looks like he had a suspect in mind. A horned goat deity. Try getting one of those to court. You can be insane and right at the same time. Mm. Sounds like something you'd read on a fridge magnet. I just don't think we can discount all of Talbot's theories just because he got ill. Well, that is Strike Troubled Blood, and Tom Burke plays the private detective Cormoran Strike, and Holiday Granger, his detective partner, Robin Ellicott. Uh, Tom is with me now, and we have high hopes that Holiday Granger will join us in time, although she may be out solving <coughs> crimes. Uh, hello, Tom. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. It's it's a whole other mystery. I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps we'll solve it. Well, you know, maybe it's the maybe it's the next season. Um, look. Yeah. I'll, uh, after I watched, after I watched the, um, the, I think it was the the, the fourth strike strike story on, on on TV. I wrote in the Times that strike was a classic waiting to happen. So I've always been keen. So lots to live up to here. Mm. Uh, the, the new series it, it opens with Cormoran Strike visiting his family in Cornwall when he's approached by a woman asking for help in finding her mother. Uh, tell us a bit about this uh, the story of the fifth series. Well, it's a cold case uh, involving. Uh, a, a possibly a missing person they don't know exactly what's happened to her they have the kind of case file of the previous detective talbot that you hear them talking about there who who has suffered some sort of uh mental breakdown whilst being on the case and, uh, and got obs uh, obsessed with all kinds of esoteric notions of of how the solving the crime might might be helped by the zodiac um which sort of taps into a, another character involved with the case who, who has leanings in that direction. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're kind of trying to unpick mm. through his um, kind of strange scrapbook of um, uh, uh, magic and the occult, really, <laughs> to, to see if there's anything in it. Um, yeah. and, and as you heard from that clip, Robin's a bit more thinks there might be something in it than, than Strike is. And it's it's very. I mean, there's a lot there's a lot of flashback. It's very sort of evocative of well, time and uh, sort of past time and period as as much as it is the present time and period. Um, look, th there are a lot of TV detectives out there, and yet Strike often seems, at least to me, uh, to be something of a cut above. What is the USP of Strike? Why why in a crowded field does it stand out? Do you think? <laughs> I mean, I mean, apart from you, obviously, which is what yeah, I should have said. You. Apart from Thank you, you. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> what a what a rude question. <laughs> um, no, I think I, I mean, uh, uh, straight away, I, I, I think it is to do with the relationship between them, and I think mm. they're both people who are perhaps more defined by their relationships with the people around them than the, than your average detective, who's often so much of a loner, so much of an outsider that uh, no one ever really quite manages to get through the cracks and somehow these two do with each other sometimes in spite of themselves they just seem to keep um prizing the other person open mm -hmm. and um and, and i think that i think that's a, a very nice balance to an otherwise very sort of macabre world that they're in it makes it very warm and there's kind of a and and, and sort of and, and human because there's like there's a there's need between them do you i mean are the characters like I mean, in, from your perspective, how much how much does it matter that, as well as being so sort of uh, so close and so fond of each other, they're also kind of battling their feelings for each other? They're, they're both in conflicts about their feelings for each other. Yeah, I mean, I think what makes us um, feel for them within that is that because there's something so profoundly respectful uh, in terms of their attitude to each other that you understand why they don't want to um, mess that up. Um, and so it's not purely kind of annoying that they're not 
kind of getting together <laughs> because of whatever else might be there. Mm. Yeah, no, it's, there's a lot more going on than just Ross and Rachel, should we say. Um, yeah. the, 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 the script is Well, by... there was a lot going on with Ross and Rachel, to the, be the, fair. There's different <laughs> things going on than, than with Ross, yeah. and, Ross and Rachel. Yeah. I mean, imagine there wasn't. That would be astonishing. Um, look, the, the script is by Tom Edge, who we've had on this on this programme. Yes. Now, now seems to write approximately 87% of all big TV drama these days. But he said he said about the show that, that people use... His quote was, people use old-fashioned as a pejorative word, but to me that's part of why these books and I hope the TV series work so well. What do you think he means? Does it feel old-fashioned to you? And, and why is that a good thing? Um, well, I'm, first of all, I'm glad you've mentioned Tom because uh, uh, I've failed to mention him in the last few interviews <laughs> I've given because I've been said that he's talking about the books and he does a brilliant job of, of adapting the books. Um, I, I think particularly perhaps the TV show because I think actually the books are very detailed in their in their understanding of uh, surveillance and, and all that stuff. And I think a TV show being a TV show, we've always had to shoot it in a way that kind of leans into the genre and leans into something a little bit r- r- retro and, and, and similar to perhaps other TV shows we've seen in the past. And we've always, I suppose, taken the attitude that that's there to be enjoyed. Um, so I would I would take that from it. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's fair. Look, for those who don't know, your your character, Strike, he's a, so he's a disabled ex-soldier turned sort of Soho private detective, but he's also the illegitimate child of a rock star. There's an awful lot going on there, and yet his his character is quite sort of a low low key, as in he's not he's a he's a he's a sort of like introverted, uh, subdued person. So I mean, is in terms of playing him, how important is there having such a sort of a I mean, I guess the interplay between that incredibly rich, uh, noisy backstory and the and the, the the subtlety of the performance is that is there a tension there that you can sort of feed off? I mean, my my my, my understanding of of the amount of um, you know pad ties and and shepherd's pies and pints of uh, uh, beer he drinks was always that that was a kind of insulation of some kind between him and the outside world and the outside world. Uh, represents a, an awful lot of his past in a sense there's a lot there that brings that stuff up so that was always you know two sides of of the same coin in a sense for me mm, yeah no i think i think that 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 uh, absolutely makes sense and look, both both the uh, both the uh, the main characters have a lot going on in in their home lives but family things in particular are complicated for strike at the start of this new story tell us a little bit about that um yeah he's he his aunt and uncle um uh, who who live in cornwall uh, and it's partly where he grew up um his aunt joan uh, played by the wonderful linda bassett is um is very ill we know at the beginning and more severely ill than we'd first imagined we know pretty quick and uh strikes who has been slightly reluctant to be completely honest with how much of a a, a mother really she's been to him and how much of a father that Ted equally brilliantly played by Ian Redford has, has been and um, and so he, he, the, the, the dawning of that is a gradual thing as he realises he's losing her mm. and there's an ongoing theme with the case they're doing also about parents and mothers and fathers so th- there's a nice kind of parallel there yeah, absolutely. Tell us, tell us a bit about what it's like on set. What the atmosphere is like. I know Sue Tully directs um, very skillfully. And she's got many big credits now. H- how long did it take you to stop looking at her as Michelle Fowler from EastEnders? Does that ever come up? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'd had that conversation. With, she'd done an episode of Musketeers, mm, and we'd got right, of course, food, yeah. And um, uh, I'd probably maybe I hadn't had that conversation. There was certainly because I was a big. Enders fan, particularly back in mm. the day, and I, I did have a load of questions. But you know, uh, you wait for the right moment. And uh, <laughs> she's such a, a kind of uh, perfect addition, really. I mean, she she's been on the show since uh, since Lethal White, and yeah, there's a I think there's a real shared um, atmosphere, kind of focus and fun balance mm. with her and Holiday and. The whole crew. We had a fantastic DOP, and all the HODs have been has, have been great. And look, presumably, when the show started, I mean, more than most others, the, the profile of J.K. Rowling meant you could be reasonably sure that sort of the, the the station and TV executives were going to get get behind it and recommission it. Is she involved much? Is is she on set? Do you ever do you ever see her floating around? No, the, the only time. Well, no, she does 
tend to come on set once or twice, mm. um, and I think she she was on set for a London bit and a Cornwall bit this time. Um, previously, it was because we did the first three books just bang 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 one after the other. It would often be if it you know we'd go from doing the read through to being on set or finishing on set and doing the read through. So she was often there for that. Uh, she chips in when she feels it's needed, and mm. it's. Uh, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of. She has a lot of trust with the team, with with me and Natasha, who plays Charlotte on the the last one. She wanted to talk us through uh, the history of that relationship, which isn't necessarily completely specified so far in the in the books. Um, and she's, you know, she said one or two things when we first began, but other mm. than that, she's very kind of you do your thing with it with all yeah. of us. Well, I mean, it's it's such a rich show, which I'm sure a lot of that just comes out of the depth of talent, both in the both in the cast and 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 everybody else. I mean, you've you've also had you've had a lot more going on this year. You were you were in the the Lazarus Project as a as a terrorist, um, the terrorist yeah. Ribroff, I, I believe his no. name was. What 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 else have you got coming up in in the near future? Well, I'm about to do the second series of of the Lazarus Project in, in January and February. Um, I was just shooting in, for five months in Australia on Furiosa, which is set in the the Mad Max world, um, and I don't know after that. But I suppose it, it, I expect it'll be a, at least two years before that's on mm. anyone's screen because of the amount of post production that goes into it. Sure. Well, look, thanks very much for coming on to, to, to coming on to talk to us. And if you do speak to Holiday, tell her hi. Um, <laughs> very, very nice to speak to you, Tom Burke. Thanks very much indeed. And episodes one and two of of Strike are on on Monday and Tuesday night, and the whole series I think is available to view on iPlayer once the first episode airs. Thank you very much indeed, Tom Burke. Uh, we've had some emails while we were talking. Patricia emails saying just discovered Strike last night. Great so far. Lovely winter watching.